Next we have Seth Benning from Atlanta. He's representing the Sierra Club with 97 chairs. Hey Seth, how are you? Good, great. We, we just met this morning. Yeah, we did. Uh, nice but I, I got to tell you, I've had, a, I think, a really good relationship with Sierra Club lately. Uh, Colleen Kiernan is here. Where is Colleen? She is the executive director of Georgia for the Sierra Club, and she does a great job, and we have a very constructive engagement with her. And the other guy that I've been interfacing with your group is uh, Bruce Nillis. Now, he has led, I guess, the national effort for Beyond Coal, and now I guess there's this effort on Beyond Gas. So we have a constructive dialogue with these folks, and we appreciate you being here. Thank you. I appreciate your comments this morning. Uh, the Georgia Sierra Club represents over 10,000 members in Georgia. We have over 115,000 supporters. Uh, many of our members and supporters are Georgia Power customers. Um, they also live in communities affected by the air and water pollution emitted from jo uh, Georgia Power's coal and fossil fuels fired power plants. Um, according to the Clean Air Task Force, the emissions from these power plants contribute to uh, over a thousand hospitalizations, over a thousand asthma attacks, and nearly 600 premature deaths in Georgia every year. Um, the way I see it, Southern Company sits at, a, sits at a crossroads. Down one path, uh, Southern Company continues to drag its feet on the development of renewable energy economies in the Southeast. The other path, Southern Company becomes a leader in creating jobs and uh, economic development and clean energy in the South. Um, I, I want to thank you for your the Southern Company's recent uh, agreement to partner with Santee Cooper on the Palmetto Wind Energy Project in South Carolina. I, like, I, hope, I hope that uh, the Southern Company is getting it, dipping its toes into the Atlantic waters for the first time. It leads to bigger, bolder bets on uh, the, the southeastern offshore wind industry. Um, like South Carolina, and you're likely aware of, of, of this with your research with Georgia Tech, uh, like South Carolina, Georgia has significant potential for offshore wind development. The state of Georgia, has the fourth highest uh, accessible potential for offshore wind development on the entire Atlantic coast. The, the research that I've seen, some of which coming from the Southern Company, shows that the levelized cost of offshore wind is near market parity to nuclear power, and all indications show that with the beginning and increase of installation in offshore wind, those costs are going to go down. Um, Georgia, particularly, has the second lowest cost of construction for offshore wind, estimated cost of construction for offshore wind projects. Um, as a state, the state of Georgia is the only Atlantic state not currently working with the Department of Interior to streamline the permitting and leasing processes for offshore wind development. Um, in, addition, in addition to encouraging the Southern Company to, to make big, bold bets uh, for the Southeast renewable energy economy, I'm curious if the Southern Company would advocate for the state of Georgia uh, joining the Department of Energy's Atlantic Offshore Wind, Wind Consortium to, to help streamline the permitting and leasing process for, for those resources. Super, thank you, appreciate it. One of the things that I started uh, since I became chairman of Southern is an outreach to stakeholder groups all across the United States. And in fact, we started that last year and had another one recently. And so these kinds of issues come up. Our, our philosophy is really clear clean, safe, reliable, affordable energy for the benefit of our customers, driving the economy in the Southeast, creating jobs, and growing personal incomes, being a good corporate citizen wherever we serve. Our employees are relentlessly <coughs> committed to that, and we will remain committed to that. We are open to any energy alternative that makes sense in that vein. And so, years ago, we started this R&D effort with Georgia Tech on offshore wind. And one of the things we found just with respect to that issue was we needed more technology development, particularly in the space of low-speed wind turbines. So we need to see